And welcome to episode 25 of the Radical English Gentleman podcast. I'm your host, Rory Jacobs, and we are back with another solo episode. So I'm sorry about that, but there is a lot of news to get into. A lot has been happening, you know, from immigration to, you know, what what is kind of going on in the UK currently. You know, got Nicola Sturgeon wanting to, you know, secede from the the union. You got a lot of things going on in the UK. But today I'm going to be breaking it all down very, very soon. We're going to be getting on a lot of guests. I am really am sorry about the lack of guests recently. It's just been really difficult to get in contact with guests. I've had a lot of people cancelling. I've had to cancel in some parts because I currently work a, um, a job. And I also, well, I've just finished college, but I have a lot of things juggling at once. But I'm going to be letting go of a lot of things very soon. And I'm really going to be going hard into this because I'm currently in the big bad world going into it very soon in about one no two weeks time um, I'm quitting my job so I'll be able to focus on this far far more so I'm so excited and I've got some major episodes planned like some really really powerful episodes so thank you for being patient thank you for listening to this I really do appreciate it a lot give it a like share it with your friend I just hope this is kind of kind of just keeping up the news um you know what's actually going on my take on it and just some other things but yeah thanks for being here but let's jump into the first story so the first story we have is about rwanda all right so what is going on with rwanda right now is quite interesting you have a kind of a weird dynamic you have a polarized dynamic as always so you have kind of people who say that if you want to limit immigration you're a racist and you also have people on the other hand, saying that, you know, there should be no caps to immigration, um, which which people kind of take take it or leave it. I want, I'll give my take on immigration because I have a very unique sta- stance for the UK, um, especially as a fellow libertarian. And what you find with a lot of libertarians is they're actually not very pro-immigration. It's quite ironic, um, you know, liberty, but no immigration. And I do appreciate that y- you can be liberty minded and also, you know, not pro immigration. I do understand that. I do understand that it's possible, but I'm just saying from my viewpoint, it just seems a bit of conflict of interest, you know, kind of anti government, but until it comes to your borders, let's toughen our borders. It it's kind of a bit of a bit of a mental gymnastics to do, but you know, I'm the same with other things. So I'm a libertarian myself, you know, this is a libertarian podcast and when it comes to economics anyway i why am right wing on you know a lot of economics i'm not you know a true libertarian i'm not a big l libertarian who's for you know laissez-faire capitalism no regulation i think that there is some good regulation like when it comes to water or there are you know there are really decent bits of regulation that do help um but that doesn't mean that kind of i'm not a libertarian if that makes sense i'm a small l libertarian but Anyway, back to the actual issue, which is to do with kind of a Rwanda plan. So my my take on it is, if you follow the channel, I'm an open borders libertarian. Now, that pretty much means I don't believe in borders, which is controversial as fuck. Because most people go, you're you're an absolute lunatic, mate. What the fuck are you thinking? Um, I'll, I'll give you my philosophy, right? So I'm quite right wing economically. So when I look at immigration... You know, people come to the country, people come from other countries, may that be. And I know when people talk about this, there's people who are kind of, you know, pro for refugees coming in and helping people who are actually in conflict. But economic migrants, they're kind of like, no, that shouldn't be a thing. So, like, there really is a, a varying viewpoints when it comes to this. But, again, my view is, you know, if an immig- if someone wants to come over here and make money by all means, because I believe in kind of a part meritocracy, like, I believe that, you know, if, if, if an immigrant wants to come over and, you know, build its wealth, build his wealth, build her wealth, um, contribute to the economy, then I have no problem with that at all, and I think for the most part, it's incredible, I mean, when you look at the NHS alone, how diverse is the NHS, it's very diverse, and without, you know, mass, um, immigration with people actually coming in like that wouldn't be possible and the nhs would crumble you know that is a reality 
the NHS backbone is people coming in, hardworking individuals from all around the world and bolstering the NHS. Now, a lot of people want to say the argument, well, people come in and they, they, you know, they, they leech off the NHS. It's, it's, it's nonsense, all right? And I do have a lot of respect for people who do find this is a massive concern. And I know a lot of people, and I'm not going to write them off, right? So I just, just got this interesting stats here. So seven reputable polls published since spring 2018 enable Mike... Wait, sorry. Oh, sorry, I'll go back there. YouGov, April 2018, basically 1,668 people were surveyed with a question... Generally speaking, do you think the level of immigration into Britain over the last 10 years has been too high, too low, or about right? So here, here we got the stats, right? So th- Sorry, it keeps on scrolling wrong. For fuck's sake. It, I'm sorry about this. So, so 39% said too much, too high. 24% said a little too high. A total of 63% said too high, 3% said a little too low, 1% said much too low, and a total of 4% said too low. So these are some very interesting stats, right? Because it shows that to the British public, right, it's a big issue. And a lot of people want to get away from that and say, well, immigration is great, it benefits the economy, you're racist if you think otherwise. No. No. I, I I don't buy that at all. There's loads of people who have very reasonable um, things to do with immigration. They have some reasonable concerns, which I completely appreciate. You know, the people who talk about human trafficking and things of that nature. I think it's a very reasonable argument. There are definitely issues with child smugglers. And it, what it comes down to with immigration and this Rwanda plan is, if your goal is to stop immigration, then this policy makes sense. So, like, I I don't think people have quite clocked it. If you're not very pro-immigration and you want it to be tightened, right, this completely makes sense because the resolution is this. So, like, when people say, you know, we, we need to stop immigration and th- and they support this legislation, it's kind of like, yeah, obviously. So, I don't quite understand some of the outrage. I do understand some of it, though. So... Let's actually go into this article a little bit because, you know, a lot has been happening with this Rwanda stuff. So let's break it down. The early evening summary by the lovely Guardian, not the lovely Guardian. I hate the Guardian. But anyway, Pretty Brattel was accused by Labour of overseeing a shambles and participating in a government gimmick after the 11th hour cancellation of the first plane carrying asylum seekers to Rwanda. So the UK is likely to challenge the European Court of Human Rights ruling that stopped the deportation to Rwanda and people seeking asylum are already preparing for the next flight, a cabinet minister said. So this is interesting because it seems really bad. It It doesn't look good, right? When you're breaking, you know, European right... Sorry, I'm just trying to remember that. European Human Rights Convention. It it's not a good look, is it? It really isn't. Um specifically again it boils down to the goals. You know, if your goal is to stop immigration, it makes sense. Um and then you get into the line of what kind of is humanitarian because I guess if you know immigration has been coming in, there has been a lot of immigration coming in. Personally I think that's incredible and I'll I'm an open border libertarian. I literally believe that, you know, if you want to come here and make money, by all means, come over here. Because when you look at the actual economy from the NHS to entrepreneurship, our economy is built on immigration. And if we if we need immigration more than ever, right, because I'll tell you what, people who come over here are some of the hardest workers, you know, in like there are. I think to come over here, with all the austerity, with all the racism, well, obviously not everyone's racist. We're actually one of the most tolerant countries in the world. I'm not saying that at all. I think, you know, we're incredibly welcome into so many cultures. But there are there are definitely racist people, and it definitely is tough going to a new culture, learn a new language, things of that nature, right? To come over here with all the adversity and actually kind of overcome that and, you know, be a nurse, be a doctor, you know, run a shop, um, 
I don't know, run a restaurant or be a teacher, whatever it is, is it's absolutely incredible. And the fact that kind of there are these myths around they're stealing our jobs and it's like even if that was the case, right? Surely the question should be, why is that? Because from a libertarian, I look at that and go, you know, the market's deciding that their value, their input is worth a lot. So they're doing well. That's that's my viewpoint because I'm a libertarian, right? But a lot of people want to look at it and go, you know, oh, they're staying our jobs. But how, how does that actually work, you know? Yeah, so like if you can go through all of that and somehow still make it, you got to ask yourself, what on the other hand, what are people here doing wrong? Because what I see a lot of is I see a lot of people here who are entitled and I see a lot of people from other countries who come over not entitled and, you know, do amazing. And why is that? It's because their gratitude and work ethic is better, you know. And it's it's been conflated with stealing jobs with actual work ethic. Because it, it, people try and do it both ways. They're stealing our jobs, leeching off the NHS, but at the same time you know they're on benefits so it's like what (laughs) like the arguments against immigration i just think have been debunked so much i really do but again i appreciate a lot of people they think is a big issue and they really want to stop it and i respect that and there are many reasons like i know entry-level jobs it does affect it for sure for me as a libertarian i believe the market sides so i'm fine with that but for a lot of people fair enough they don't because they're having their community and jobs impacted but you know the uk to change court ruling that hold rwanda deport deportations the uk likely to change the european court of human rights ruling that stopped the deportation to rwanda of people seeking asylum and is already preparing the next flight a cabinet minister said so Theresa coffee the work Cof- coffee i don't know the work and pension secretary played down the idea that the uk could withdraw the European Convention on Human Rights in a response to the court decision which halted the flight on Tuesday night. So it's quite weird because you have a lot of criticism of this because you have so many voters who are like, finally immigration is going to get tackled and it looks like it's not. Um, I won't know, I did actually listen to Boris's response to one of the um, criticisms of, you know, what's happening and it was a very reasonable response, you know. He was like, we want to welcome people, obviously, but we do need to tackle immigration my again my policy i just think immigration is incredible i think it does so much to the economy it does so much to so many sectors i think we need more than ever now because you know when you look at young people growing up now like people nowadays i mean i know it's a generalization but you know when you look at the stats 80 percent of young people no 70 percent are socialists like we don't have a backbone of entrepreneurship i don't think bubbling for the future i really don't think that you know when you look at the stats of people who live here it seems atrocious um and you know there's so many job vacancies like there is a thirst for labor and it's like if we just had mass immigration we could just fill that slot but again people don't feel the same way as me they feel like it's a problem some reasonable And I think that there's also, there's people who are in between. They want immigration to be tackled, but they also maybe don't want, you know, they don't want extreme legislation. They don't want to break certain uh, human rights codes. So there will be people in between. And that's, you know, I'm sure a majority of people are actually like that. They want immigration to be tackled. They want less immigration, but they don't want to, you know, risk anyone's lives, but they do want to tackle the issue. Um, It's just find that thing in between. And again, if you raise the issue of immigration, people just call you racist. It doesn't matter what you say, you are a racist and it needs to stop because I just know so many people who are, you know, completely reasonable, like even loads of people from certain ethnic backgrounds who are like, we need to stop immigration. And like, you know, they get called a racist or some ridiculous thing like that. So it's... I guess, again, if, if it boils down to, if you want to stop immigration, it's a good policy. If not, I don't know, it's 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 a difficult one. Personally, I don't think, like, I just think it'll boost the economy. And also the amount of people who might die as well if this goes through is quite worrying. Um, 
I mean, I guess it will decent decentralize people coming because the you know labor want to say you know this is unhumanitarian and to an extent i do agree because i'm an open border libertarian um for sure i do do think it is unhumanitarian um but the the actual goal of it to detect deter people coming could actually be a major success i i don't know the statistics on things like the australian immigration system but you know if if this does come into place i'm sure that many people will be deterred from coming in and i'm sure to an extent it will tackle immigration a lot so this could be a major success for the goals which are being put forward to drastically low immigration and a lot of voters this is a big issue so you know um I guess the thing you got to balance out is how far do you go to appease voters without being unethical? Um, and I'm not saying that the the voters who want strong immigration are unethical, but I'm saying how far do you go to please a certain belief? You know, are you willing to break conventions just to kind of say you've done something about a certain issue? Because there's a lot of issues which I'm sure... Can, conservative voters are pissed off at like spending and you know increasing taxes i mean the fucking conservative government on my ass but yeah interesting story we'll be doing a podcast soon i've got a bunch of people coming to the rig podcast studio very soon so i'm very excited for that so stay tuned because we're gonna be having a good chat about that people who share concerns like many individuals in the uk about immigration so i'm really really looking forward to having that chat and shout if, if you are listening now really do appreciate it shout out i'll I'll name a few names you in billy cow (laughs) excited to get you on um and this is a very interesting story so this is by the press gazette the future of the media so trust and interest in news falls in the uk with sun mail mirror bottom of the table so almost 40 46 percent of british people actively avoid reason the news as a result of the fatigue at excess covid and political coverage and a drop in trust in journalism a news report found so this is stark i've seen i've seen polls like this in america i've never seen them in the uk so the digital news report 2022 by reuters institute the study of journalism the i r i s j found in the trust the uk media had undergone a dive recently despite rising slightly during covid with just 34 percent of those who polled in 2022 saying they trusted uk news bloody hell 34 that is atrocious compared to 51 percent in 2015 while the figure put the uk far above the latest last place usa with just 26 percent trusted most news reporting still left the country among the 10 countries with the lowest trust in me in news media so this is this is proud and i don't want to go too far into it because i've actually recently got yeah um but you know it does boil down to covid there was not a balanced argument Pe- people were silenced people had their jobs lost people had things happen to them and there was no coverage of it i'm not going to go too far into it but i'm not surprised at all you know i talk to people all the time and they're like you know, like, people are waking up, people are sick of just fake news, they're sick of hit pieces, they're hit sick of just being lied to, I mean, perfect example, The Guardian put out a piece, um, re- like, about the co-author of the Great Banton Declaration, uh, Jay Bhattacharya, who's, you know, a very established guy, professor at Stanford in medicine, disease control, um and they you know they they tried to kind of call him a crackpot and it was just like what what the hell you know this established guy and you're trying to make some ludicrous argument that he's a crackpot and what they said was he went on one show once which found out to have one bad guy on their show i mean god they really are trying to reach for anything to smear people um and you know you got you got the independent i mean they chat absolute nonsense they said that the Carl Rittenhouse shot four black men or three black men i mean they literally printed lies i mean Carl Rittenhouse shot white people and they said he was shot black people to smear him as a racist that's how insane they are 
you know there's there's countless stories um where just completely insane articles are written about people and people are just getting fed up of it completely like even owen jones people go you know owen jones a great journalist or whatever I was actually having a look at his coverage on COVID the other day and I was looking at it and I was like, God, this guy really, really is spreading fake news. Like, it was hilarious. He tried to label Sunetra Gupta of Oxford some sort of crackpot. So it's hilarious. When when he described her, he couldn't he couldn't target her credentials because her credentials are incredible. She's at fucking Oxford, you know, epidemiology. So he had to, like, do some thing which like she's reckless she's dangerous about um like her views on things and it was just it was incredible seeing this so-called established journalist trying to reach out for any minuscule thing to attack someone on and act like they're hitler i mean come on i mean this this is how bottom bottom tank journalism we got in the uk right now so yeah this is very interesting so like 2015 70 percent now we've got less than half. And to be honest, it's a good thing. Independent media is on the rise. I wouldn't call myself an independent media person, but I would call myself an independent cultural person, if you know what I mean. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I feel like when people listen to me, you know, I'm not backed by a corporation. This is just me in my room talking, waffling <laughs> to a microphone. You know that this has come from an honest place. And... I'm talking to you, I'm giving my take on things, it's come from a truthful place, what I believe, and if some of you guys hate me for my beliefs, a lot of you have the respect to listen to me, even though you hate my views, that's that's crucial, right, because you know that I'm not corrupted by many numerous factors, may that be political, you know, I've been, like, verbally attacked um, a lot and shit, but people who listen to this show know kind of roughly where I sit and you could disagree with me on immigration because I'm sure loads of you will absolutely hate my views on immigration but you know that my views have come from an honest place and that you know I'm for freedom of speech I've had people on I've had about nine people on who literally said I disagree with almost everything you say I get people on specifically who disagree with me you know I love that but you know that when BBC News do an article or a thing they're not going to get or they say they're impartial they get both sides it's just bollocks maybe they do for taxation economics but when it comes to well maybe not even that anymore i don't know but for so many issues that they do not show both sides at all it's a complete and utter myth you need to be a tiny bit awake to realize that a tiny bit not even like you know you don't need to be informed to realize that just some just some simple things um like you know lockdown well, like th- there's just countless examples i, I don't want to go into it because i've gone into it so many times but again major episodes coming soon so this is an interesting story so scotland and the uk split over gene edited food so this is fascinating because i i've realized that a lot of our food is just edited like it's gene therapy to make it grow better or you know chickens the amount of hormones that are put in chickens is ridiculous um so the UK government has introduced a genetic technology, precise precision breeding, quote unquote, which would set different rules from the EU following Brexit. Um, so she has written to the UK. Wait, uh, the bill has introduced. Oh, sorry about this. Um, yeah, Miss McCallan said the Scottish government will not accept any constraint on the exercise of development, developed powers to get set standards within developing policy areas gene editing allows scientists to change a plant or animal's dna so scientists can engineer crops that are more disease or drought resistant without adding genetic material from other species so i mean this this is a fascinating one because it's like um it's it's difficult knowing where you sit because it's like on one hand This technology is incredible, you know, we're countering many of the things like climate change or, you know, hot summers or, you know, lack of water or or just saving water in general or just being prepared for the worst. You could look at it and go, great. On the other hand, you are literally manipulating nature. And what are the consequences of that? You know, I'm not a scientist. This isn't medical advice. I'm not a nutritionist. Do not listen to this. Check out the NHS website, you know talk to a nutritionist talk to your health specialist um 
what are the kind of effects of this? Because, you know, it's one thing to kind of have great technology. It's another thing to know what are the effects of this. Because, you know, when we do look at certain rates of certain Ill- diseases, I wonder how much of that is food, you know? It's fascinating. You know, GMO, genetically modified organisms. So much of our food is like kind of manipulated and it's it's also a thing of ethics like is it ethical to intervene in mother nature in that way but in many ways we do but in many ways we still don't and then you get to the whole argument of abortion and then it you know it it, it kind of links to abortion i think about how much stuff do you actually leave in nature and how much stuff do you intervene it's is a very interesting um debate i mean I, I want to look more and more into it because I'm, I'm getting paranoid about things like microplastics. I want to have fish. I'm getting more and more paranoid of things like that. Um, like I've been seeing studies like, you know, you eat a bag of plastic a year if you eat on average like this amount of fish and shit like that. It is quite like disturbing. But this story is pretty much, I think, just about kind of how after Brexit, there will be certain things unregulated. So it's going to be interesting having trade agreements with people like Scotland. Um, So under the UK's International Market Act, anything approved for sale in one part of the UK must be available across the whole of the UK. So tomatoes, I call them tomatoes. I was going to say tomatoes. Tomatoes developed by scientists in Norwich to produce high amounts of vitamin D could be among the first gene eds to produce to go on sale. So things like that, like, I mean, I don't know how I feel about that, you know. They just whack in a bunch of vitamin D to a tomato. I mean, you know, I know there's supplements. You get orange, you get a bit of sun. Um, I'm all for supplements, don't get me wrong. But I really don't know how I feel about them, like, genetically modifying tomatoes to have more of one vitamin. Um, I mean, I'm not the experts. So maybe, you know, it's a good thing. But, again, I, I really don't know how I feel about that. Because you are going into Mother Nature and being like, we're just going to tweak you, tweak you, tweak you. Hmm. Oh, well, I feel like a bit more vitamin K, so we're going to add that more in an orange or shit like that. You know, there's where where does it end? You know, like there could just be an, uh, like a fucking banana, which has like, you know, it's like a protein shake because it has like, not a protein shake, like a probiotic thing where it's just got like every single vitamin in and it's like, at what point ca- do you think like, this is kind of too far um so yeah um she also raised concerns about the impact of the bill on scotland's food exports to the eu as your impact assessment on genetic technologies precision breeding bill acknowledges moving gene edited products from england's gm regulatory regime would mean divergence from the eu approach as such could have complex costs and future yeah future trade she wrote so i think like us leaving the EU, if we're going to modify certain things to do with our crops, which we might, um, you know, how is it going to work with other countries in the EU, like Scotland? I, sh- I won't lie, I haven't, I should have um, read this article a lot more thoroughly. I've really skipped over a lot. But it's just the broader point about gene eds, food, GMO. It's a fascinating debate. I'm definitely going to get a nutritionist on to talk about that one day. I think that'd be a great chat for sure. But anyway, thanks so much for listening to today's episode. I'm sure it's been another short one. It's been another solo episode. I'm sorry, but thank you so much for being here. Love you all, all 107 people or more if you're listening now. Um, You know, chuck your thoughts in the comments about Rwanda. I'd be fascinated to know what you guys think. Are you are. Uh, kind of more do you want immigration to be far more tougher do you think there should be far more done do you support this or do you think it's inhumane and you know immigration will bolster the economy or or are you one of the people in the middle who think immigration should be reduced but we shouldn't go too far to breach people's rights and ethics so thanks so much for listening to episode 25 the radical english gentleman this has been a great one this is probably my fourth episode solo episode i do enjoy these because i can rant get shit out get the articles going hope you do enjoy love you all take it easy have a good one and i'll catch you next week thursday at six o'clock love you all and peace